Hello and welcome and thank you for listening to this podcast from filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. I'm Chris, also with a K. And I just I, I seem to be uh, saying the same thing at each one of these videos, so it should, hopefully makes you feel comfortable that I'm saying the same thing at the beginning of each of these talks, getting you used to them. Anyway, filmsbychris.com, Chris with a K. Today I'm going to talk about uh, a little bit about AI and uh, I want to know what you think about it. So uh, be sure to comment uh, below uh, whether you're listening to this on Patreon or YouTube. I want to know what you think about uh, this, this, this um, not AI in general, but uh, let's talk about AI in advancements, theoretical and the taking of jobs. I just watched a video yesterday uh, by the Blender Guru, a talk he did somewhere talking about uh, are, is AI going to take jobs away from artists? Um, and he went into like how software is getting better at like rendering scenes out and like taking real live footage and creating virtual environments from it, uh, finding people and animals and creating uh, motions from them and how much better it's getting at, and is it really going to take jobs? And his conclusion was he thinks over the next 10 or 15 years, I guess, that um, a lot of the grunt work is going to be taken over by computers, but the artistic part's still going to be taken over, still going to be uh, human done, which is, is, is a, uh, uh, I think, a good view. Uh, I think about things I've read when it comes to AI, and they're talking about how AI is now making music, and people can't tell the difference between that music and music made by real people. It's kind of composing symphonies and blah, blah, blah. You know what? That's true. And I, I think that uh, computers could very easily, I mean, even without AI, I could write a script that randomly generates music that might sound halfway decent if we're talking about, you know, electronic, techno, or synth wave, which I'm not insulting that stuff at all. I love that type of music. I listen to it all the time, but it's, 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 it's very basic. And even as it gets smarter, it could do more of like a rock sounding song, uh, you know, with guitars and stuff and, and maybe sound like a real band playing songs. But I think when it comes to that aspect of it, there is going to be still a spot for human musicians. And that being said, uh, I mean by that is, uh, first of all, you know that most music uh, is probably marketed towards teenagers. Uh, when you're a teenager, you're at your most emotional time in your life usually. And and I mean, if you're, I'm, I'm 37 right now, getting ready to turn 38. Uh, and I love music. And a lot of it's very nostalgic to me. And But most people, the music they listen to when they're in their teens is the music that they, they, they really uh, feel for. And I feel very nostalgic for a lot of that. There's some songs I listen to uh, from the 90s uh, there's a few like by uh, My Life with a Thrill Kill Cult, uh, which I only liked a few of their songs, but there's a few other songs I still listen to. And I'm, admittedly, I listen to them like this really should sound horrible, but I really like it. And I think part of it is just, you know, some music I like, but also just the nostalgia of it. Um, but when you're a teenager, things are so emotional. And for me, my favorite band uh, has been Nine Inch Nails. It's just an absolute... Uh, Trent Reznor is just a genius when it comes to writing music and lyrics, although I wasn't a huge fan of the last album. In fact, it's the only Nine Inch Nails album I don't own. Uh, and different, some people like some don't. It's art. It's, it's something. It's an opinion thing. I'm not saying it, it's horrible. I'm just saying I didn't enjoy it. Um, but part of what made his music so good was the lyrics. And he was very good about writing lyrics that were very emotional, but not very specific. And he would say in interviews how he didn't want to really talk about songs. Uh, I think it was a, an interview uh, many, many years ago talking about Down In It, which was his first song, which was actually, a, a he admitted in the interview, a ripoff of a Skinny Puppy song. Skinny Puppy? I think it's the name of the band um, or the name of the song. I've listened to it before. I don't remember. Anyway, uh, and the songs are very similar uh, instrumentally. Uh, and he's like, I'll talk about that because it's an older song, uh, so it's about time I talk about it. But he liked writing songs and not talking about what they were about. But his songs were more about emotional. And actually, that's one of the reasons I still, even though there were some newer albums, I liked the music. Lyrically, I think he felt, I felt like he got a little too specific on what he was talking about. Um, like he would have albums that were very much talking about political stuff. And not only do I not really care about political stuff that much and don't want to hear it in my songs one way or another, his political views uh, seem to be very different than mine. Uh, but that's, I still like the, the instruments song, but I think he was just being too specific with his lyrics. He was trying to get a message across rather than an emotion. His older songs were more about emotions, where I think his newer songs were more uh, about um, just getting his point across. But that's where I'm getting at with the AI thing. Maybe 
uh, AI can create a song that sounds just as good instrumentally as a Trent Reznor song, and that'd be great. I would love that. But the lyrics, even if AI was able to write lyrics, uh, which I think we're still ways away of them writing lyrics that re are really touching and emotional in that aspect, even if they were, I don't think it would be as relatable. Because part of it, when you're a teenager and you're listening to these songs that are emotional for you, part of it is connecting with that song artist, knowing who that artist is, and feeling like a connection uh, that, wow, this person's going through the same thing I am, even if they're not, even if their song's being vague and you think they're going through. Uh, you know, with Trent Reznor, I'm sure his experiences were very different than mine, but the emotions were the same. If I knew that was written by a computer, I don't think I would have been, I might have liked the music, but I wouldn't have been so connected to it. So there are definitely aspects of art in there that still the human element is important. Even if the music, even if the uh, uh, the AI can make a great replica of it instrumentally, there's not going to be that human connection because uh, because you know it's being faked. I guess maybe an AI maybe could write a song like that with great lyrics and then they could advertise it as a real person, hide that it's AI, which I would think, in my opinion, would should be legal because then that's false or at least misleading advertising if you're saying that's a real person and it's not but advertising can get away with a lot depending on how they word stuff um but there's that aspect of it ai uh a big concern that people have with it is the whole is it going to take jobs and the answer is yes there's definitely going to be jobs especially unskilled jobs they're just manual labor stuff uh but there's also going to be jobs for people still. Yeah, I can go to a fast food restaurant and use a machine to order my food and that took someone's job. But there's still going to be, if I want to go out and eat at a nice restaurant, part of that experience is having someone serve you, having a, a, a waiter, a server that you interact with. And although that could be replaced with a robot, you want that experience and you're going to be paying for that service. And you pay more for that service. So yeah, a lot of the grunt work, just as uh, Blender Guru said with uh, the artist part of it, he thinks the grunt work's going to be taken away, but there's still going to be that that more defined, the more f fun parts of the design for the designer. Because he said a lot of the grunt work is just like tweaking stuff, doing little things, you know, uh, moving things around and just like fine tuning it where where he wants to be able to just work on the, the more of the, the bigger overall creation was my understanding of his talk. And I think that's, that's true with a lot of the jobs. I also see, and, and people can definitely, because there's so many different views on this out there, when it comes to AI taking jobs, obviously it's going to be bad for some people and definitely rough at first. But really, if, if AI and robots don't turn around and kill us, uh, but they keep working for us and there's going to be less jobs, they're still going to, the, the companies that run these businesses still want to make money. And if people don't have jobs and they don't have money at some point, like if everyone loses their job, then there's nobody spending money and that's bad for everybody. So there's definitely, I think, again, going back there, many, many, like probably like 75 years ago, there were a lot of people who thought that by this time or even way before this time, we'd be down to like a 15, 20 hour work week, which would be awesome. So I would hope that I think there would be a level of adjustment, but I think at some point, if, if a lot of these AIs are gonna take over our jobs, that we're going to work less hours, but still be able to live because theoretically, and of course there's, you know, you got corporations are always going to milk you for as much money as you can get, but theoretically things are going to cost less because you're paying less to have them done because you have these machines doing the labor uh, and it's going to save money. So things should be cheaper so you can work less and still get the same things that you were getting because things are going to cost less. And I think that eventually get that there's still going to be aspects and, and, and this is all just theoretical, just thoughts I've had. And I'm not saying that this is how it's going to be or I definitely think it's going to be like this. It's just some thoughts I had. I think materials are definitely going to be a big thing because you can have machines mine for the materials. You can have machines assemble the materials, but you still have to get those materials. So it's going to be the people who own the properties where you can get these things. But then at the same time, you can probably reuse and recycle a lot of stuff where you can... Um, you know, maybe have garbage that you usually send to a recycling bin, you know, recycling plants where they would recycle these things. Maybe you'll have a robot that will be able to repurpose these things for you. And now you're buying less, which might be a bad thing for corporations. There's just, it's so unknown and we won't know. We won't know what's going to happen until it does happen. And it's going to be a long, slow process. And there are going to be some growing pains. But I think overall, as long as the AI doesn't kill us, <laughs> that AI is a good thing. Because I, I would love to see, and it'll probably be, be, you know, I'll be retired 
by the time we really get to this point to where people don't have to work 40, 50, 60, 70 hours a week. Um, and also, if you're in a job that's easily replaceable by AI, it's time to start thinking about a new job. And I get, you know, obviously one of the things that a lot of these companies are working on are self-driving vehicles, self-automated -autom vehicles. And um, if you're a taxi driver or a truck driver, and you've been doing this for years, and you know, it's going to be a good at least 10 years before that really start taking effect. And who knows, it's like the timeline on it. But for thing, for these things, they still need a lot of work and they, then they have to get approval. So it's going to be years before we go in. And if you're in that career, great. But I know I had a friend just like two or three years ago get his truck driver's license. He's still a young guy and he's going to become a truck driver. It's like, why would you go into that career knowing that that's going to be one of the first jobs that's taken? And it's not like that's, you're just getting a job. You go through a lot of work to get one of those, those positions. But we'll see. Um, but think about your job. Think about how easy it is. I'm a firefighter. That's my day job. And I've seen videos of robots learning how to fight fires, which I think is awesome. I think it's awesome for multiple reasons. Uh, one, it's going to be a slow transition. It's going to be, you look at these robots. Yeah, they can walk into a room and fight a fire, but they're not going to be able to crawl through the things at this point, the machines that they've created. Uh, a, a fire scene is not just an empty room with a fire most of the time. I think it's going to be, if that was to happen, it's going to be a very slow transition. Uh, it's going to be fought for, fought by a lot of firefighters to prevent that from happening. But I see it as an opportunity to up my skill level because they're going to need people who need to control these these robots and stuff like that. They're, I don't think that it's going to be a long, long time until they're completely automated. I think at first they're going to be remote. So firefighters don't have to go into buildings and fight fires. They can be outside the building and send in a robot. Uh, I think that would be great. Um, and I think it would just help protect our lives uh, and a lot of people disagree with that you know that we see it as taking jobs but I think something like that uh, is going to be a slow transition it's, it's not going to happen anytime soon and uh, and if I saw if I thought these robots were ready to to take over firefighter jobs I would tell people don't become firefighters now I would but I still recommend becoming a firefighter uh, I think it's going to be long after I retire before there's any type of these robots actually taken over but there's still technology increasing that actually makes our jobs better uh, and safer all the time. And I would love to see more of that. Anyway, again, this is just a theoretical, theoretical talk. Uh, there's so many different things that could come out of AI, good and bad. What do you think? Let me know below, uh, comment, and I'd love to hear what you have to say. Thanks for, for listening. Please visit filmsbychris.com, that's Chris K, and my Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash 1000 Thank you, and have a great day.